It's time for our Documentary Week Talkback, or Docback, on today's BFD. Lori Silverbush told us the inspiration for her documentary was the story of a young girl who she mentored who was so hungry she was found foraging for food. I wasn't able to fix the problem. I was only able to sort of put a band-aid on it temporarily. As a filmmaker, I thought maybe I should make a movie about this, but if I wrote a screenplay about it, I thought it's too shocking. People really won't believe it here right. in the U.S. So a documentary seemed to me a great way to bring this, this story out of the shadows and let people know what's going on. So that becomes our question. If you have a story to tell and want to affect change, which medium is more powerful? A scripted film or a documentary? To help answer that question, we have the Vice President of Participant Media's Documentary Division, Courtney Sexton. So let's start by addressing Lori's concern that the storyline of this girl would be too unbelievable for a narrative. Is that true? Well, I think what Lori was getting at in this is that the statistics are just so staggering with what's going on with food insecurity and poverty in America. I'm guessing her feeling was that if I made a scripted film of this, there would be a certain level of detachment from reality. You have an actor, you have a set, but when you have reality, which is the documentary, and these characters and the facts, it's hard to turn your head. Right. I mean, you can turn your head, but it's very hard. There are phenomenal actors out there that can move people and tell real life stories through acting, but a real character, real life, it's like talking to your friend about something that's happening to them versus them telling you a story about somebody else. With A Place at the Table, um, if you see it, there's this character, Rosie, and she's, I believe, eight years old, and she's walking you through her house and talking about not knowing where her next meal is coming from, and I don't think there's anything more emotionally stirring than hearing it from her own mouth, yeah. But narratives have their place as well. They generally draw a larger theatrical release and get more exposure. Is that something that you have to consider when bringing these points to attention? I mean, I think as a filmmaker, it's a decision you have to make. Do you want to tell a story that you know is maybe not going to reach as many people because it's a documentary, but potentially could be more impactful in terms of um, just action? Could this story have been made into a narrative, in your opinion? Yeah, sure. It could have been. I mean, I think of Winter's Bone, which is a story about um, a lot of things, but certainly about rural poverty. And that film sticks with me, but mm. I don't know that it would lead me to the same action that this film does as a documentary. Have there been any documentaries that have changed your life or maybe changed your wallet <laughs> due to how much you wanted to donate to the cause? I think the one in most recent history that has changed my life on a daily basis is Food Inc. It made me change the way I eat on a daily basis. And yes, it changed my wallet because organic is more expensive. It, right. it is more expensive <laughs> to eat, which goes directly back to a place at the table. It, food is, is, it consumes us in sure. so many ways. So that film for me was a life changer. Thank you so much for joining us, Courtney. Any last words of wisdom? Thank you for having me and go see a place at the table in theaters. Do it. Do it. Pound it. Pound it. <laughs> For more info on A Place at the Table, go to takepart.com slash table. Definitely see it in theaters. And to see the full interview that we referenced here, click there. For BFD, I'm Marisha Ray. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>